<laughs> on my last video I did, I showed you how to make a cylinder lock into a repinnable one just by tapping out the rivets and uh, re-threading and putting some grub screws in. So what I want to do today is I've got another cylinder lock. It's just a half cylinder lock. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make it into a cutaway lock. When I say cutaway, I mean with a section cut away so you can see the pins moving up and down when you're turning it and when you're picking it. So what I'm going to use for this is I've got no machinery, I've got nothing. All I'm going to use is an axle and a file. So it will probably drag on a bit this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in stages. Now the first stage is stripping the lock down. I'm not going to bother doing that in front of you because you've all seen these locks stripped apart before. And if you haven't, I've done previous videos on stripping them apart. So I'm going to strip this apart now and then I'll show you what I'm going to do after. Right, that's it all stripped apart. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the axle and I'm going to cut that piece off there and then I'm going to cut a cut down there and then a cut down there. I think you need to go about three mil deep. If you go too deep, you'll make the cylinders inside too exposed and then the pins and the uh, springs will just fall out. So I'm just going to cut them sections out now and then uh, I'll get back to you on the next bit. Okay, so I've cut the bit off the end. I've put two cuts straight down there. So what we need to do now is we need to remove this this piece in the middle. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put three or four more cuts in the middle and then I'll be able to prise these sort of the like little thin slats. I'll be able to prise them out with a screwdriver after. So I'll go and put some more cuts in and then I'll show you how to remove them. Right, I've put some more cuts into that piece we want to remove out. So what you need to do next, once you've got your cuts in place, all you need to do to remove them is get a screwdriver and just put it in one of them. Just give it a twist and then just wiggle it about. And it will pop out. There's one removed. And then just do the same with the others. If they're a bit tight, get a bigger screwdriver because you can put more leverage on with it. So there, get a bit of a bigger screwdriver in it. Give it a good twist, look. You see that? Just give it a good twist. There you go. There you go. They just pop out. Same again on the next one. The thinner you cut them, the easier they are to pop out. So I've probably not cut mine thin enough. It will come there. There you go, it's moving there. Uh, working on the top one now. Let's get the top one out first and then it will give you room, more leverage for the bottom one. There you go, it's coming. There you go. We've just got that one left to get out. So again, let's put the screwdriver in. Just twist it. Ah, there it goes, look. There you go. And now you're left with that. So what you need to do now is to get a little needle file or something and just scrape them bits out in the middle. Like so. Like that. Share close up of it. And there you go. So the next thing to do now is to get that surface, surface I should say, a bit smoother. So just spend a bit of time filing that up. I'm going to do that now. And then once you've done that, you can just reassemble the lock and you've got yourself a little cutaway lock to play with. So I'm just going to file that down and then I'll uh, put it back together and I'll show you the finished product. Right, I've cleaned it up. 
It's not perfect, but it'll do. A uh, little tip for you. Sometimes when you make these, if you go too deep, then the chambers are a little bit too wide. And if you over overdo it, the springs can pop out because you've gone too deep. Now, on this particular one, I have gone too deep. So a little tip, get a little bit of Perspex. I tell you, if you ain't got no Perspex, get an old CD case, just the same. Cut it to size and then just push it. Make sure it's tight and then just push it on over that. And then when you put your pins in, they won't flip out. You can also put a little bit of super glue at each end if you want to keep it in place. But if you cut it so it's tight, it won't come out. So now I've got that on, I'm going to put the pins back in and then I'll uh, I'll show it you all complete. Right, that's the finished product. I've put the plastic on, like I said, because I did cut that out too deep and uh, the springs could pop out when you're turning the key. So that just keeps everything in place. From start to finish, it only took about 30 minutes. So if you want to make yourself a little luck, it's dead simple. Right, let me just show you that the key's working. Put that in, you see the pin's moving. There you go. That's it. As always, thanks for watching. And if you do like the video, please, please subscribe. Try a bit.